Really young babies are happy to be passed around to just about everyone. However, something changes around eight months and stranger anxiety starts to set in. And when this happens, not only is the child uncomfortable around strangers, but even around other people that they've met before. And so you wind up with these awkward situations where the baby doesn't want to be held by grandma. But while this is how most babies react, not all children react the same way. Some don't really seem to have a strong bond with their caregiver, and some kids don't display stranger anxiety at all. In order to study this behavior and to learn why some children might deviate from the normal pattern, Mary Ainsworth created what she referred to as the strange situation. And here's how it would work. A mother, pictured here in orange, and the child, pictured here in yellow, would enter a room in a place that they hadn't been before, in this case a psychology lab. In the room was a stranger who was actually part of the experiment, and they're pictured here in blue. And for the first part of the experiment, the mother would just sit in a chair and let their child explore the room. And I should note here that I'm saying mother and not parent or caregiver, because mother-child interactions are what the research has primarily focused on. And this isn't to say that a child can't form a strong bond with, a, with another parent or with a different caregiver, but here we're just going to be talking about mother-child relationships. And so we have a mother and we have a stranger, and both of them are sitting in a room with the child, but neither is interacting with the child. At some point during the experiment, the mother would get up and leave the room. And she would try to do this without calling too much attention to herself. So she wouldn't walk over her child and say goodbye. Instead, she would simply get up quietly and leave. And so the baby is left alone with the stranger. And after a certain amount of time, the mother returns to the room. And so we end the experiment exactly as we started it, with both the mother and the stranger in the room with the child. And okay, so that's, that's kind of a weird situation. What exactly were the researchers looking for when they set this up? Well, for the first part of the experiment, they wanted to see whether or not the child would explore the space while the mother was present. So would they get up and walk and play with all the toys, or would they be more reserved and cling to the mother? The second thing that they're looking at is how the child responds when the mother leaves. Does the child start crying when they realize that the mother is gone, or do they keep on playing? And lastly, they were looking at how the child reacted to the mother after the mother returned to the room. So were they happy about her return, were they sad upon her return, or did they just ignore her altogether? And after looking at the data, researchers found that they could split children into two main groups, those with a secure attachment and those with an insecure attachment. A majority of kids, about 60% of them, demonstrated what was referred to as a secure attachment. And this meant a couple of different things. First of all, the child felt comfortable to explore the room. And maybe they stayed next to their mother for the first couple of minutes that they were in the room, but eventually the child felt comfortable enough to move around and explore. And there were times while the child was playing that they might look to the mother or they might walk back to them. But in general, these children felt comfortable to explore the room on their own. But when the parent left, it was a different story. The children became really upset. They became really distressed when they noticed her absence. However, that distress tended to go away once the mother returned. And when she returned, the children would typically go to her. They really wanted contact with her. Insecurely attached children showed some different behaviors. When these children were first brought into the room, they tended to cling to their mother just like the securely attached children did. However, unlike the securely attached children, the insecurely attached children tended to stay with their mother. They tended not to explore the room. And just like the securely attached children, when the mother left, the children became really upset. However, unlike the securely attached children, that distress didn't really end once the mother returned. They were upset when she went away, but they weren't soothed by her presence. Other insecurely attached children even showed avoidant behaviors, meaning that they weren't actually upset when the mother left the room, and they were kind of indifferent to her when she returned. And so now that we know that these two different styles of attachment exist, the next question is why? What might be responsible for these differences? What might cause some infants to be securely attached while other infants are insecurely attached? So when researchers started to look deeper into why kids develop different kinds of attachment, they found that parenting style had a lot to do with it. Mothers who were sensitive and responsive to their infants tended to have children who exhibited a secure attachment. Mothers who came across as insensitive or unresponsive to their children's needs tended to form insecure attachments, which I'll represent here by putting a lot of space between the mother and the child. And that's not to say that the parents of insecurely attached children were behaving in any way that would be considered to be really inappropriate. There isn't really any child abuse or serious neglect going on here. These mothers would attend to their children, much like their securely attached peers, but they tended to ignore them at other times. 
And this is something that you can probably see for yourself if you go out and observe some parent-child interactions. One thing that you could look for is how often is a parent looking at their phone when their child is trying to get their attention. And that's not to say that checking your phone is bad or will damage your children in some way. The only question here seems to be how long are they checking their phone for? And do they continue to look at it even as their child is trying to get their attention? Another question that you might have is whether or not any of this actually matters. Does it really make that much of a difference whether or not a child is upset when a mother enters or leaves a room? Does this really have any long-term effects on a person after childhood? And interestingly enough, the answer seems to be yes. Some research seems to indicate that our early attachment style forms the basis of our adult relationships later in life, specifically as it relates to our comfort with affection and intimacy. So individuals who are securely attached as children tend to be securely attached in their adult relationships as well. They feel secure in their partner's love and they feel that they can trust them. And they really gain a lot of comfort and security from that. Individuals who are insecurely attached as children tend to be insecure and anxious about their relationships when they're adults. Or they might try to avoid being too attached to any one person. And even more interesting than this is the fact that our attachment style as infants seems to affect the relationships that we have with our own children. So individuals who had a secure attachment with their parents tend to have a secure attachment with their kids as well. And individuals who had an insecure attachment with their parents tend to also have children who are insecurely attached. And take a moment to think about the implications of this. Because this research seems to indicate that how comfortable we feel with our parents in our first year of life continues to affect us all the way through adulthood. 